Okay, good morning. Um, I want to talk about <clears throat> remote vacuum monitoring systems for a minute. Um, being an H2O dealer, I am specific to the Smarttrex system, but what I'm going to talk about goes for any remote monitoring vacuum system. Um, so we all know how fancy these systems can be with TV monitors and uh, the mapping and all these gadgets you can do. You can turn pumps on and off and all that thing with that. But the, the basics is you bought this system to help you make money um, and efficiency, being more efficient helps you make money as well. So I just wanna talk about the quickest way to help you make money with this system. A lot of people think, oh, I have vacuum monitoring now, and now I know exactly where the leaks are and, and I can fix it and it's gonna be perfect and da 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 da. Well, I'm here to tell you that without getting in the woods, you, you're not gonna fix anything, okay? And believe it or not, these systems actually create more work than anything. And you say, well, wait a minute, why would it be more work? Well, because you'll get lines that uh, you're gonna walk three, four, five, six times before you get them perfect sometimes. That's just how it goes. But you wouldn't have known that without this system. So in the end, it does make you a better sugar maker and it will increase your profits. But you can't be lazy about it. Um, I've been running this, this is my fifth season, I guess. So anyway, so let's get to it here. As you see on my monitor here, um, I have a list of the numbers and letters on the left. Those are the those are the lines P1, 2, P3, P4, and so on. And then you see the vacuum levels that they're reading. And you see that we're only a little over 25. I'm running a three-phase pump, and we're we're pretty much still frozen here, even though those temperatures look like it's not. We're, we're froze solid. Um, I don't have the pump running very high. It's on a transducer, so it controls itself. But still, I, I only run it at about 25 right now anyways. So, as you see on P1, it's a 1.4 HG. Basically, no vacuum. So, I know there's an issue on that line. Okay? Now, I just got back from walking all these, all these problem lines. And uh, I'm going to talk about that for just a sec. So... I know I have no vacuum on P1. It's one inch. So I go walk that line to try to see why is it why is it so low? Well, where that line is, it got a little bit of sun yesterday. The sap ran a little bit into the line right in front of the sensor, and it's plugged up right there, and it's frozen right in front of the sensor. Okay, there, there is no other leakage on that line. P2, see it's in the red. Um, if we click on that, it's actually, whoa, okay, it's not vacuum, it's making pressure. Um, that line goes underneath the road. It's in a culvert, and we're frozen under that culvert right now. There is literally six taps on the other side of that culvert where that sensor is. Um, yes, it's 1,800 feet long, but that is why it's reading zero on that right now, and I double-check that. Uh, P4 here. Um, same problem as P1. It's it's frozen in front of the sensor. Just we had a tiny little drip yesterday. Just came out, just barely frozen. Um, P13. It's frozen by a stone wall. It's in the dark right there. Same thing. It ran a little bit in the sun. It's just frozen right there at the at the stone wall where it goes over the stone wall. Um, it's got plenty of slope and everything on it. Just got some you know weird weird thaw yesterday. Um, P16, that one, I did not find anything on that. I do have, it is a relatively flat section there. So I'm going to recheck that again another day. Um, I don't know if I have a slope issue there or possibly a sag issue. I, I, I don't know. I got to check that and, and see. It doesn't, it didn't look it today. I checked it with my phone. For level, with, with the level on the phone, that isn't always the most accurate. Um, so I may have a slope issue on that one in one spot. It's about 50 feet long, so that could be it. K2, um, same issue as P1 and the others. We got, we got a little, little hang up there right before the sensor. 
As you see the other ones, you know, they, they didn't do that. Now, K8. K8, I dealt with the other day. I had a bad tap. It froze the main line. It has still not thawed out. We have not had enough temperature. That is in a, in a brook. And we have not had enough temperature to thaw that out yet. The sap is not run, it's still frozen. S5, also a bad spout. Um, it was a, it was a, it's a large two tap tree that is not much life left in it. It was a bad tap, retapped it. That line's still frozen. Um, should be fine in a couple days here if it ever warms up and we get some real sap. So even though I'm not getting sap, I, I you know I can't fix a lot of the micro leaks. I'm fixing some of the larger leaks by looking at these zeros. Okay? Um, and before this monitoring system, we used to do the same thing when we had vacuum gauges. Okay? And you can do that with a vacuum gauge. You can if you have a trail system where your main lines end, you, you can put a vacuum gauge and literally ride out there and look at the vacuum gauge. You could, uh, you know, you can run the vacuum gauge with a piece of tubing to an area where you can see it on your ATV or your snowmobile and do it that way as well. Um, you know, it gets you out in the woods and gets you looking at things. The monitoring system kind of speeds that up. You know, um, I can look at it right here. I don't have to ride around, you know, and, and try to check everything. Um, I do have a lot more main lines than I do sensors. I have not done all my main lines yet. We'll get to that someday. If we can ever make any money with making syrup, you know. Um, but this is the most efficient way is, is check it zeros, okay? I know we all want the highest vacuum possible. So, you know, when it's running and when it's flowing, we're all busy gathering sap or boiling the syrup, making syrup. Um, and you try to get in the woods and fix a leak if you have guys. You know, we're, we're, we're a small crew. We have 17,000 taps, but there's only three of us. And I pretty much do all the woods work. And, and what this system does every day, I can look at these 42 sensors, 40 sensors that I have. And, you know, if there's a zero, I go deal with it. Um, I have learned on some heavy runs in the last few years, I have learned that some of my pipes were not big enough. Uh, when, when the vacuum dipped from 27 to 23 and I'm out checking this, the line thinking there must be something wrong and what was wrong was the pipe wasn't big enough. You know, I had a three quarter pipe where I, where I needed a one inch pipe or I had a one inch pipe where I needed an inch and quarter pipe. So I did learn something there. But essentially, if you have some vacuum on the line, a 25 inches or plus vacuum on the line when it's running, you know, no big deal. We don't, we don't care about that. You know, and you'll get to the micro leaks eventually. You'll walk every line, you'll fix the micro leaks. But these large zero leaks, when you have no vacuum, you know, those are the ones that make a difference because the lines are frozen. They're frozen and the sap can't come down and they're gonna stay frozen until you, you know, you fix that problem or it has to get warm enough to thaw that ice out. And you know that when, when, uh, when you have a venturi like that, that the vacuum just makes the ice super hard and it doesn't thaw well at all. It also is making contamination if it's a large enough leak, you know, you get kicked back in the lines and, and the sap's going back in your spout. So, this video's already, already been longer than I wanted it to be, but don't hesitate to purchase a vacuum monitoring system. You don't have to go all out and go crazy buying all the fancy gadgets and goodies to make it all work, to get going and to help make you some money because literally I have a list of zeros I've been watching the last week and you know we've been frozen solid most of 2019 now and I've dealt with those and you know I'm pretty much got the system ready to rock and roll now as far as I know as far as any big leaks go we're, we're gonna be golden and we're just gonna you know tend to the micro leaks and walk every line two or three more times of course but I'm, I'm here to say that uh it, it definitely is the future um, as far as efficiency and sometimes efficiency, you know, has to be done to help make some money. Um, and these times, you know, just adding on guys that are walking around randomly isn't necessarily the way to do that. So um, get in contact with your local H2O dealer or, you know, any, any, any one of your dealers that, that sells a monitoring system and uh, try it out. Thanks.